Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, me, myself, and I are gonna go check out an estate sale uh, auction. It's a Bilberg auction. It is in Halstead, Minnesota, the beat capital of the world, or the world's home of the world's largest beat. You can't beat Halstead, Minnesota. Several of you viewers, subscribers, friends of mine have sent me a link to this. I believe it's the Jerry Quam estate. There's about a dozen items that there's pre-bidding on. There's a Hillborn injected small block, a Riley six cylinder, it's not a six cylinder, uh, sprint car engine. Uh, there's a 26.7 Model T Roadster with a 32 grill shell. There's some sprint cars on it, some old, old sprint cars. Um, and it looks like there's a lot of other cool stuff. There's some cars in the trees at the place. So. We're gonna cruise up to Halstead. We're gonna stand around in the heat. It is super hot out. And we're gonna check it out. Hopefully uh, get some deals on some items. Duff's gonna stay here, babysit the shop. And uh, I'm gonna go try to spend some money. So let's jump in one of the tow pigs and we'll go check it out. <laughs> Old sprint cars here. Looks like this has got some steel wheels. This has got some old, uh, I think they're magnesium Halibrands. Both got quick changes in and out box, knockoffs. And this one's got some of the remnants of a small block yet with the old Mickey Thompsons and my favorite valve cover hold downs. Sprint car steering, of course, because it's a sprint car. Disc brakes, a lot of aluminum. That thing's got a cool look to it. Brian Buzzick, I looked him up. Apparently he's still on the uh, LinkedIn. This one's pretty stripped out. Small block Ford and old Model TC cab. Looks like 37 to 41 spindles, juice brakes. Oh yeah, the vertical steering shaft. Some type of aftermarket gauges, floor shifter. It's pretty cool. Looks like it's got some ladder bars and a. Is that a Buick rear end? It's a big GM rear end. Oh, yeah. All the hot rod. This thing's got a Model B engine in it, so I'm pretty sure it's on a 32 frame. It's got juice brakes, dropped and filled axle. 32 grill, filled, last tag, 85. Oh, she's got a Mallory distributor in it even. Ford cluster, some Nerf bars, 39 tail lights. Oh, motorcycle fenders for the front. Cute little aftermarket tank held in by cables. Banjo rear with juice brakes. Looks like this must have been his late model, 9902 Chevy. Four wheel drive with our typical bedside delete that is a big trailer that puppy's having a good day god dang rocking my shoe so sure enough crawling underneath that you could feel a reveal so she is a 32 frame single axle sprint car trailer model t frame a frame with split bones and juice brakes with a little 
Model T body on her. And then here's another T Touring. Got a Chevy steering wheel. Well, let's see what's on the pallets. Like they're gonna get started they got a bunch of stuff out at the farm that they haven't gotten to yet or that they're gonna sell out there like I said this is at the auction service and there's a bunch of like Elgon fuel injection stuff there and a pretty busted up quick change a lot of cool stuff here's a Hemi out of a big truck you can tell by the transmission it's like a stub out of like a 55 Chevy or something who knows What's that, a 235 or 216 Chevy 6? Sure, it needs a starter, because they all do. Oh, it's got an adapter. It's got some type of cyclone. Oh, that's neat. So it's got a cyclone adapter to go from a flat or a Chevy 6 to a 39 Ford box. So that box would be good property, too. It's a 39. It's got synchronized gears. I've never heard of such a thing. Small block, more quick change stuff, axles. More gearboxes. Small block. Early Ford axles. Header flanges, sprint car steering boxes. 265 to 350. Oh, stud girdles. Another adapter. That looks like GM. Pile of quick changes. Nail boxes. Jim's adapter, another speed Jim's adapter, that one's small block Chevy. Front clip off of a Pontiac with a 400, 350 Chevy with a Hillborn on it, double hump heads, Corvette valve covers that are busted up. It's got the fuel pump on her though, yep. Yeah. Here's the Riley 2 port. overhead valve conversion on a Model B. You can tell it's a B because it's got the fuel pump block off plate. And they must have had some type of oiling added up up here. I'm guessing it's for the valve train up top. Another Hillborn setup. Nice uh, T grill shell. Some fenders. Race car seat. Yeah. There's a lot of goodies hidden here. I'm gonna go through it all and see what we can find. I don't know how we will ever financially recover from this, but we bought a lot of cool stuff. I am never going to financially recover from this. It's been way too much money. I guess there's a lot of good stuff out at the farm out here that they weren't able to bring to town. They sold all the cars at the farm, and then they sold the scrap. And I wasn't able to go to the farm, but I bought the scrap. I gambled on it, paid 500 bucks for the contents of the farm. Hopefully we find some magnesium wheels or some spindle mounts or just, you know an Arden overhead valve conversion. We did get the Riley. We got the Hillborn engine went for 900 bucks or something like that. The guy didn't have the money, so then they put it back up. We ended up getting it for 700. And yeah, we got that 32 grill. We got a aluminum 
They're a magnesium Halibrand wheel. Uh, we got a magnesium uh, quick change center section. We got some cool stuff, but we, we ponied up that. And we got that uh, first sprint car, and then we got one of the other, uh, or that Model T Roadster with the Model B engine. That thing is super cool. Uh, I had to <laughs> bid a subscriber up, or he bid me up, or however you want to call it. We, we cost each other some money, but it's it's I thought it was a really good deal on what it was and it's got a lot of history and I talked to the family uh, this guy was a bachelor and that was like the only car he ever got running so that's pretty neat and uh, we're gonna get a hold of his nephew and, and get some of the history on it and whatnot and uh, hopefully we'll see if we can get it running it's been inside since the 80s so pretty excited now the fun part of digging through all the stuff at the farm and finding all the other getting our other junk load up. So we got two engines to load up. Uh, sprint car, a bunch of sprint car parts. Oh, I bought the sprint car trailer. So we might get crazy and we might just uh, bring a couple tires up, pack some bearings and uh, come along or something, see if we can pull the old uh, sprint car. Home. Who knows? Wish us luck. All right, let's uh, get out to the farm here and see what he's got. Hopefully there's something good, something to pay for the whole day maybe. All right, I think we did quite well on the scrap iron purchase. We're gonna go square up with the auctioneers and start figuring out how to load this stuff up. We got those two engines we gotta get loaded up yet. And then I think we're gonna take the hot rod home and then we'll have to come back for the sprint car. So, wish me luck. All right, let's do this. yard we got our two engines on there and a couple extra axles that came with the sprint car uh oh what do you got no way that's the deck the piece that goes between the deck lid and that's awesome let's see if it fits I know it fits you know it fits it has to yep. oh no way I had that car in there. oh it's too short Yeah. Are you well, I mean, yeah, there's about a, I don't know, a two inch gap. That can be the only thing that that thing is for. I mean, it's, I mean, it's better than no, nothing. It's, it's, no, it's, it's right. But he's got a shorter deck lid on it or something. That's, that's what the deal is. This is a aftermarket. This homemade. is a homemade deck lid. Sure. That's just sure. a homemade deck lid. That's the original piece that goes there. Nice. And the other deck lid went up. Yep. Yep. So there's a 60 horse flathead. Right there. No way. Yeah. You didn't even see it? No. Well, yeah. imagine that. I didn't see anything. You know what a 60 Yeah. Horse, right? So that's what. I lost that finger from a 60 horse. So I always wanted to make a 26, 27T. Yep. And do a 60 horse in it. And but the speed parts are spendy. Anything flathead spendy, but then you no. then it just doubles when you get to sixty oh, horse. Triples. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. A 60. Sure enough. Oh, got a reman tag on and everything. Hopefully they crack. Well, they're all cracked. It's just a matter of how bad, right? Yeah. So we got a Model A sedan front door. I don't know what else this is. A lot of this stuff was in the building. That gentleman bought the contents and we worked a deal. There's a Stuart Warner Greenline fuel gauge, some uh, quick change gears, early Ford spindle, early Ford shifter, aftermarket floor shifter, sprint car aluminum wheels. This crossover plate, I need to figure out what it's off of and what it's for. 
That's a magnesium like three piece sprint car wheel. Small block, race car oil pan. There's a Model B oil pan. They found some gold teeth in an envelope in here. <laughs> in one of the, there's a safe, but yeah. So this stuff's close to the pickup. We'll carry that back. We're gonna have to make quite a few trips, I got a feeling. But right when I walked in, I know it's not in great shape, but here's a 55 to 64 Chevy car center section. But it's a factory limited slip. So that's a good score there too. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a sprint car axle tube. Hang on to that. Maybe we can make something out of it or find somebody who needs it. We'll start over here where we walked out last. It's, it's just overwhelming the amount of stuff that was left out here. So there's a pair of wide five Ford front hubs with juice backing plates. So those are 39s. The backing plates are pretty good property. Model B block, Model B block, another Model B block. Another 55 to 64 center section. Tri-5 deck lid. We got a sprint car nose, small block head. We should probably be looking at casting numbers, but we don't have to. Oh, it's a 993. Well, I guess we'll be taking that even though it's probably not in great shape, but 993 is pretty desirable. Like it was meant to be. There's a 41 or 42 to 48 Ford axle right there. So, should I get that axle and wish bones out. More sprint car axle tubes, hairpins, firewall, front mount plate. More sprint car brake rotors, sprint car spring. Early Ford, another one, truck axle tube like they're using on the sprint cars, T-spring, uh, this is an Oldsmobile center section, Hemi head, chrome reverse Ford wheel, looks like a brand new small block racing pan. And I'm just going to have to go through this pile, one kind of looks like a Tri-5 bumper but not sure. Ooh, headlight. Better take that back. A couple small block Chevys and some trannies. There's a banjo rear end right there. There's just a pile of sprint car tires out here. 111 John Deere mower. DD Speed Shop. Just a pile of 56 doors, I think. Yeah, they're all 56 four door doors, but we should snag them up, I suppose. Three speed transmission with a side shifter conversion. This is kind of a honey hole right here. Wide five wheels, juice backing plates, but yeah, all kinds of juice. Ford backing plates, those don't look Ford. That's not Ford. Multi lug pattern wheels, we'll grab those. There's an aluminum firewall for a sprint car with an in and out box in the firewall or the Master cylinder still attached. 35 Ford wheel. Just, it's thick back here. Here's an old hot rod frame. It's got a, I think it's a Merc flathead in it. Well, it's a later flathead anyway. It's got the uh, aluminum distributor, timing cover in it. It's had those cool headers on it. There's the back cowl off of a Model T coupe. And then yeah, this is rectangular tubing, suicide front axle. All old school Ford stuff. We'll have to fish that out here somehow. There's two more 35 Ford wires there. And then the Model A two-door sedan is way back here. There's another sprint car wing, I call them. Hopefully we can get a couple bucks out of that. Here's the tail cone off of a sprint car number 34, Paul. Kaczynski designs and signs. That's a pretty decent Model A two-door sedan on another sprint car trailer. So we had a corner on the market of sprint car trailers. Hemi just laying in the dirt. Chains on it, all ready to go. There ain't much there, but it's an early Hemi. 
probably out of a Dodge green truck, I assume. And then here's a pile more of sprint car steering wheels. There is one early Chevy wire, but otherwise it's all sprint car stuff, it looks like. Look at these cool old pie crust cheater slicks. Yeah, look at the grooves in that thing. Those are awesome. It'd be cool for mock-up, but they don't match. Oh, that one only has it on the one side. And I don't even know how far back it goes. There is some more stuff back there. I haven't been that far back. This is as far back as I've been. Mostly more tires. Hey, Chin, there's a Chevrolet hubcap for you if you want to come all the way up here and get it. Ooh, is it a rally over there? Eight lug? Oh, I really love these cutting up my cut up leg. Looking at cool early Ford parts and I get excited about a seven inch Chevy pickup rally. More sprint car wheels. No magnesium ones though. All right, getting back to civilization. Another sprint car fuel tank. Good old number 69. Everything including the kitchen and or bathroom sink. Look at this old hot rod frame. Model A frame. It's been Z'd. Juice brakes on the rear. Juice pedals. 39. Shifter. Still Lewis. 8BA flathead with mounts. Again, juice brakes up front. Just ready to drop that body on it. Have a hot rod. Little Hastings hitch adapter. I don't know who sold those, but they're made in uh, Hastings, Nebraska. And it's for uh, converting an old car axle to a trailer. Clamper to the axle, hook that to the tie rod, drag link, and away you go. Follow you right behind. There's this cute little, I don't know, Cushman or narrowed axle of sorts right there. Utter's bar. I think that's about it. Well, let's grab what we can and hit the road. I'm gonna need a cold soda when I get home. All right, I think we're at capacity in the pickup. I didn't really want to put much back here because I don't need anything bouncing off this car, blowing off the trailer. We gotta come back anyway. We got those two frames to get and the body and some other wheels and stuff that are heavy. So, yeah. I wonder if we can sneak alongside these trees with a skid steer maybe and sneak that stuff out of there. We'll find out. Anyway, I'm going to go find a watering hole and uh, head her for the flatlands. Everybody must be riding horses this weekend instead of buying hot rods. As you can see, we made it home. There's several wheels that don't spin on this thing, so we're going to try to get those loose. And get a tire that holds air up here. I got the puller out. It's uh, not going well. The shoes are frozen to the drum. And we've uh, played with the adjusters out here. Done our due diligence. So we're gonna keep smashing away on that. Because you know, I hate flat tires and vehicles that don't roll. So we're gonna make this thing roll for the first time in 38 years, 1985, yeah. That's good math. So close. God. We just gotta take our old shoes out of here. Or miss the pads. Fords. Long one to the front. Short in the back. So either that was wrong. I think Ford does it backwards. All right. Let's get these out of here. Make the uh, whole rolling situation a lot easier. Duff, go fetch out some cool wheels to put on here. Or just one that rolls for now. It'll be sufficient. dog over there in the shade is of no assistance. I guess I'll go look for my own wheel and tire. Better yet, didn't we pick up some 35 wires? There's two sitting with that car. Hmm. Let's just throw a tube in this thing and carry on with our life. How about that? All right, other side's loose. Got the tire pumped up. Let's do this side.
Whew, that one fought us. These brakes are riveted. The pads, pads, the shoe, the liner on the shoe. So we had to bust all those rivets. I'm sure we got the mesothelioma from all the asbestos that's in there. Yep, that definitely tastes like asbestos. And yeah, the fronts are bonded, so they just pop right off. Rivets hold real good. But anyway, so on these early Fords, let's see if I can show you on the front. There's a bolt with an eccentric on it right here. And then it's got this spring on it, so you can't like back that bolt out. But you just take and you push that eccentric, and it pushes the shoe out against the uh, drum. And then the same thing, I think these two down here, well, not on these ones, on the Model A's. Those are adjustable as well. But we tried backing those out, tapping on them. No bueno. So we had to get the old puller out and use some force, which these are uh, sacrificial. You're going to put new brake shoes in it anyway, so not a big deal. Look at this. He even had a park brake cable on here. What do you think of this thing, Duff? You mad that I was gone all day, walking around trees, having fun? Well, you were hanging out with Bobber. All right, let's get this back together. We were running out of daylight, eh, Duff? Sandwich time. I ain't even cracked one yet, I don't know how. Some type of miracle, that's how. And these axles have a keyway, so you gotta make sure you put it on the right way, otherwise you're gonna push the gas and you're gonna have no go. Where's your key at? Oh, there it is. We're missing said key. That being said, this nut holds the entire hub on. I forget what the torque spec is on it. I'm sure Wes will know, but you want to have this pretty much cranked to the moon because you don't want that falling off. We're going to be taking it off to do brakes anyway, so I'm not going to get too crazy. Not a spot that you want to forget the cutter key. Mmm, we could make asbestos pie. Nom, nom, nom. But in all seriousness, be careful of the asbestos. It's not good for you. Well, Jerry did put some aftermarket hubcaps on there. You can tell by the way that they are. They should have a V8 stamped on them, but that would be a false advertisement. I wonder what like the 32, 3, 4 Fords had for the uh, B Model B cars that were four cylinders. Let's check. Well, she rolls first time in 38 years, rolled on its own. So I think it's time to send her off into the new home, the shop where it'll rot away. Just kidding, we're gonna get after this one, probably. Let's hope nothing bad happens. Fingers crossed. Duff, are you gonna help? Where are you at? That's a lot of work. I'm probably need Mojo's help tomorrow when each comes up and get these engines off here. I'm gonna unload the rest of this, but I'm gonna find the deck lid. I mean hood. Found it. I'm gonna put that on there. We're gonna sit back and have a sandwich and admire our work. Oh, you coming over to check it out too? See what you think? Can you smell magnesium? Yeah, it's the best.
Nothing better than a nice cold whippy for a hot day of buying hot rods in the junk. Get your magnetic can koozie. That's right. They hold a full beer, a full whippy. You can get the OG DOO logo. Logo? Logo. I'm talking like I'm drunk, but I'm not yet. Or <laughs> the low life. The low life's my favorite. We're currently out of the crown. Low life. You like low life too? Do you like the Anyway, get your magnetic koozie at Mortski.com. Tell them one more time. Mortski.com. I know. We're not gonna go for a ride in it just yet. We got a little work to do, but let's just sit back and have a sandwich and enjoy the fruits of our labor. You didn't even do any work for it. Oh, I know, you're beautiful on television, that's what you do. You are just excited tonight. What are you so happy about? Huh? You haven't got to be on the YouTube and on this video yet? Come on, let's go outside. Tell me what you're, tell me what's on your mind. Is there something we forgot on the trailer we need to attend to? Oh, he probably wants an R-I-D-E. Well, now that we opened said adult beverage, there's probably gonna be no R-I-D-E's the night, pal. But that's the beauty of these can koozies is you can stick them to your dash and they're always ready to go for, you know. Oh, look at that, we even got one in here. There we go. You don't have to stick them on your shifters like you used to. Now you got a magnet, you just keep her stuck to the old glove box. How neat is that? How neat is that? Sorry I teased you with opening the doors on Big Orange here. I gotta do a little work to that thing. No rides! <laughs> you goof. We're shutting her down for the night. You know once the sandwich gets opened, we pull the keys. Yeah. You don't have thumbs. You can't drive. You can't drive. See the cup. How excited are you to uh, run through our new concrete? Cement, is it still wet? Yeah. We got some concrete showing up this morning. They got a pretty good start already, those concrete kids. They get after it real fast. Ooh, Mustang. Don't be running through the concrete, Duff. Got a couple aprons going on today. Let's go check it out, Duff. Got one in the back of the shop here. 40 by 20, so we can wash and put a lift over there, hopefully. All the good stuff. Then we got an apron on the front and back of each one of these guys. So we're doing six foot aprons on each of these pads. I think this one's 12 feet wide and that one's 18. And then we did a four foot apron on the back side so I can put pallet racking in between the two buildings there. Put rear ends and iron and whatever else. And then on the back of the shop, it's 40 foot wide shop. We got a 20 foot, hey, there's Bob. We got a 40 foot apron, 20 feet deep. And so that way we can pressure wash out there. You're not standing in the dirt or you can work outside on a car and not be in the gravel and the dirt and everything. And then over on the east side, we're gonna hopefully put a two post lift at some point. So A, somebody can work on that or work outside or it'll be really handy for pressure washing if you got something that's super muddy and grimy or you just want to pressure wash underneath and instead of laying on your back and trying to get what you can, you can lift the whole thing up. And really be a dirt ball. Oh, you're behaving so well this morning. Yeah, who's a good boy? Duffers is. Well, I suppose we should get back to work, huh? Go get something done today. Yeah? You're a lot of help. Duff and I got the pickup unloaded. Well, yeah, the pickup. Now we filled the trailer. What is that god awful noise? A cattle trailer? With a nasty wind noise? Hmm. Interesting. Anywho, see so what we got here. So we got a 993 head. I text my derby car buddies. Oh, it's an airplane. I can see it over the uh, airport airfield. Winter International. But uh, I guess these 993s aren't as desirable as they once were, but we'll still hang on to it. So this is kind of the swap meet pile. Let's see if we can get a couple bucks out of it. Ford juice backing plates. I got a fleet of them already. 
uh, Ford Squareback Spindle. I'm not sure if it's an early or a late one. I would imagine it's probably an early one. So not much value, but a couple bucks. These center sections, I think this is a 55 to 64. And that one, which is a posi, I believe is like a, out of a Buick Ols Pontiac. So I need to run some numbers on both of these to be sure what exactly I have here. But I think that posi is pretty good property. You need to find out what it is and what it's worth. Wide five Ford drums with juice backing plates. Take to the swap meet. Uh, we got some Model B parts here. We'll keep those with the Model B stuff. Oh, the T-Grill shells. I'm just gonna throw this in a big swap meet pile and hook onto my enclosed trailer and maybe we'll go somewhere like Iola or the Suede swap meet this fall. Tri-5 Chevy deck lid. It's pretty nice. It's got a couple of wrinkles in there, but overall pretty decent. It's not all rotten on the inside. Dirt sits down there and they get super rotten, but this one's pretty good. Been sitting on this side and it's still pretty dry. I got like four of these already, so I'm gonna keep the best one or two for my project. Got this super sweet magnesium sprint car wheel, three piece wheel. It's got that spacer, which I don't know if you need it, but maybe it's for different widths. So you can run like a 15 inch tire and a 14, or maybe you gotta have it. I don't know. Sprint car things, it's magnesium, so we're gonna hang on to that. And I think my car has a matching one to it on the other side. Chrome reverse wheel, we'll throw that in the wheel pile. One, two, three, four, 35 Ford wires, we'll hang on to them. A couple of wide five rims, we'll hang on to those. Sprint car wheel, we'll see if my car needs it. It's too new, doesn't look that cool, so we'll probably try to get a couple bucks out of it. I don't know what this adapter crossover plate thinger is, so if anybody knows, comment down below. We'll have to look it up, see if we can find a part number on it see what that fits but i think the starter's on the wrong side for a small block chevy i think it would fit on the back of the engine like this the starters on a small blocker on this side so maybe it's like bulls i don't know 39 shifter we'll throw that in our shifter pile we'll throw this green line fuel gauge in with our gauges i don't know what these are are they for a fuel pump for like a hillborn or is it an oil pump i don't know there's some instructions there and what the guy wanted machined we got a couple of these wheels here that are multi-lug pattern. They are super heavy. Unfortunately, they're 14s, but if we can find some rims, we can have some dual lug pattern wheels floating around to put on different projects. And then all these sprint car parts, I think we're just gonna try to find somebody who's into sprint cars that wants them. Then in and out box is probably the most valuable piece. Maybe the axles, I don't know. They're probably obsolete. Again, this thing's probably obsolete. Look at how she's been welded up there and gusseted and another gusset and welded all the way around. This thing lived a hard life, but cool wall hanger if nothing else. And then we got some quick change gears, some axle tubes, some hubs, suspension parts. There's that front plate. I might hang on to that just to have for a uh, mock-up for a bolt pattern. So I know where I gotta mount some stuff. I don't know, but yeah. Pretty good haul, and there's a bunch more we gotta go get. Duff, you wanna pull some casting numbers for me? Figure out what we got? Yeah, I was super excited about this. Not that I'm less, ex I'm almost more excited if it's a old center section, because they're even harder to find in a limited slip. All right, let's check her out. Get everything put away, go back for another load. You gonna come with this time? Trailer's all unloaded. I'm gonna do some repairs on the old HP trailer. The bolt for our equalizer seems to be missing. Of course, I noticed that when we were two hours away from home and loaded up, ready to come back, but really just rides on the bottom of the frame rail, didn't hurt anything. We had a new bolt on the shelf, so we're gonna patch her up. Get her back on the road, eh, Duff? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then maybe check the other side to make sure it's tight. Good call, Duff, good call, good call. And here's what we got going on. That nut came off and it Kind of wallered that hole out a bit, but it should be fine. And so the front of the leaf spring has got an eyelet, and the back of the leaf spring just has this hoop right here, and then it rides on this bolt. Somehow, when it articulated, this spring got on top of that bolt. And you can see it kind of rubbed on the frame a bit. Everything should be fine. Oh man, from the factory, they must not trim them zip ties. Gross. But uh, we're gonna have to pull the wheel off to get the bolt in. It's, how the heck did that wheel ever fall out of there, or that bolt fall out, Mojo? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's tight fit, huh? 
Well, it looked like it had been rubbing on this. It cut this bead on this here. Oh, it, tire? oh, it did catch the tire. Not bad, but. Oh, it did cut it up pretty good. It should be, it should be smooth right there. Yeah, she rubbed for a while. God dang it, we just can't have nice things. All right, let's uh, fix somebody else's screw up. Story of my life. The old Miller 200 over here, we're gonna spot weld. Actually, the, east, the nut on this one was spot welded already. We put a new bolt in there. We're gonna spot weld that nut, and we're gonna do both sides. That way they shouldn't come out. It's pretty common for them to spot weld them. You can get them back off if you need to, and hopefully they don't come out not when you're commanded to. Yeah, that's how the tire should look. She made a few revolutions rubbing on there. We'll have to uh, call up old HP trailers, see if they ever seen this before. We're wondering if it ever even had a nut on it. All right, the old HP is all back together, ready for action. I'll tell you what, that air bumper jack thing is real good for lots of things, like picking up a trailer off the ground. Right, Duff? Right. Boy, does that engine stand look sad. We should probably put that on a better stand, so that thing don't go drop on the floor, eh, pup? Yeah. Good call. Well... That didn't last long. The neighbor called. He's got a broken down Ford. And he needs it hauled to Fargo. Well, we don't usually do customer work. We got to go that way to get more stuff from the auction. So, we're going to get our trip paid for. Plus, we get to haul a dead Ford. It's always a good day when you get to haul a dead Ford around, right, now. Hey, get your magnetic can cozies from Mortski.com. Keeps your uh, Dr. Pepper's cool on nice hot days. Got her all loaded up, don't we, Duff? Silly Fords. 2014 with a 6.7, 80,000 miles. Needs a fuse relay center. And you gotta have Ford programming. So, I guess we'll take it up to Ford. Good news is he said the uh, fuse relay center is only 180 bucks. I don't know what it's gonna cost him to program it, but it could be worse. All right, got her back home safe. We're not going to head up there because we got to go meet with the insurance guy and go through insurance on everything. Pay some more money. Yeah, let's take a look at these uh, aprons. Looks like the concrete kids are gone. Looks good. Hey, don't run on the concrete, please. Thank you. You can walk on the rebar if you want. It's windy, Duff. Of course, you're gonna have to drive in the wind hauling that thing to the Fargo. Looks good. You look fit so much more junk out here. Because that's really all we do is just collect junk out here, let's be honest. Sometimes we work on it. Sometimes it's cool, but usually it's junk. Look at that nice new apron all back. We'll have some shade in the afternoon back here. It's gonna be real good. Very nice. Really nice. Even plastic wrap the shop so they don't get any overspray. Is that what it's called? Splatter. Broom finish. It's gonna be good, right, Duff? You can put a little pad that we can slide over here with the extra. Yeah. What are you doing up there? You trying to put that up there? But I. You failed? I failed it. And I failed. You, oh, you changed your mind. We just can't leave you alone. I know. Just messing everything up. You want me to find a place for that? Yeah, get rid of it. Get rid of it, he says. No more pecs. Well, pick it up. Okay. Throw it on the cord rack. All right, we got the uh, F-250 unloaded. Now I think we're going to try to put some wheels on the... Uh, race car trailer and then try to get the uh, race car on it and then do race car things
Well, apparently the ramps just hold the car on, but the uh, chain's holding it They're a little rusty, so we're gonna have to loosen them up. Yeah, that ain't working. So we're gonna use straps the way real men do it. Hercules, Hercules, All right, we are loaded for bear. Got our three model B blocks strapped down. We got our cage on there, our trailer, which look how tight it is. Like it just barely slid between my fenders. Don't worry, it's just that tight on the other side. A couple chains, a couple straps. That ain't going nowhere. All right, let's uh, see what we can fish out of the trees. Looks like pretty much everything got picked up out here as far as cars. And those scrap guys got our engine blocks for us. So now we're gonna see what we can get done. All right, there's the uh, sprint car wing and the A sedan. Here's the two frame chassis. Came in here with the uh, Milwaukee Sawzall. Get rid of a bunch of these guys. I'm gonna be able to drive right in. How's hard work? Okay, not really, but I'm sweating anyway, because I'm fat. You ready to go find a sandwich, Stain? Yep. All right, talk me into it. You don't need a 111 John Deere mower, do you? All right, didn't see anything you can't live without? I didn't live without at all. Dang it. Well, probably. <laughs> all right, uh, I think this is kind of going to a vlog style video here. So just got back from County Commissioner meeting. I was there on behalf of the Sergeant County Museum, and then we had a museum board meeting. So yeah, nothing really exciting to report on that. But anyway, they got a woodchuck problem at the museum. In a typical museum fashion, we're using antique live traps because a new one is $60. So it's groundhog, woodchuck, whatever. But they think the problem maybe lies in this hose clamp wire debacle here. So we're gonna try to get that work. If anybody knows what a live trap is, it catches the critter and they stay alive. So you can re-release it into the uh, wild. So I think we're gonna bend a little piece of sheet metal and try to make a, a hinge kind of like, kind of like that guy right there. Just a little barrel clamp around it. Get rid of this stuff. Hopefully it works. You set this thing up in the air. I can't do it one-handed. Set this guy up, come on up like that. Runs this link, that latches it. Linkage goes down here. He steps, or she, steps on that uh, flat piece and then they get stuck in here and they have a nice piece of toast with jam on it to enjoy. So we're gonna fix that for the museum real quick. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This is a have a heart made in Letitz, Pennsylvania. That sounds like a good town to visit. Letitz, PA. Yeah, well, uh, why don't you give me, uh, <clears throat> why don't you give me ape tit for 200? It's not ape tit. Why don't you pick a category? I'll take Letitz now for 800. <laughs> you gonna get in on this, Mojo? You know how to fix live traps? You know how to do everything. What is it? It's a uh, jack of all trades, master of none, right? which is better than a master of one. I think we just gotta get a little piece of sheet metal and make a little a hinge here, kind of like that guy. Yeah. Their, their, uh, their clamping method did not work, apparently. This hose clamp's really giving me the business. So what are you out to catch now? A woodchuck. A woodchuck. Has Made a home in the schoolhouse in front of the museum. 
And he's not welcome there, I'm told. And they don't have $60 in the budget for a new live trap. So we've been tasked with repairing this one. All right, let's go trim up some sheet metal. Duff said, your stupid idea with tin bending around ain't gonna work. So first we tried mechanics wire, and then we tried, I think this is aviation wire. I think that's gonna work. So we got her hooked up here, then we did a little reconfiguring bending. So, well, uh, Woody comes walking in here. Oh, hey, look, some toast. And then he steps over the uh, pad here to get to his toast. And then boom, Woody has a new home. Should we bring him to live with us, Duff? Do you want a, another friend to snuggle up with at night? No? Okay. So I'll let you know how this goes. We're going to take her back to the museum and set it up by the schoolhouse and catch him. So I don't know. I think you guys call them groundhogs. Other places, ground squirrels maybe. Woodchucks, we call them up here. But they are digging machines. They can dig a hole the size of me in a matter of hours, and they're hard on buildings, they're hard on wood, they come up through wood floors, they just, savage little beasts. So, we're gonna uh, find him a nice new place to dig holes, not in the museum, the schoolhouse of the museum, or the log cabin. I think he's in the schoolhouse right now, they say. Yeah, we can't be having that, right, Duff? All right, Punxsutawney Phil is gonna get a new home. We'll send him to Pennsylvania. We'll send him to uh, La Tits, Pennsylvania. All right, there you have it. A day in the life of Morsky fixing live traps. All right, let's go eat some lunch. Also, got almost 2,000 miles of old cowboy Cadillac. Oh, and before I go to lunch, Let's show you what Mojo's got going on back here. So we poured those pads out back to move a building in and we kind of want to move the building with the rollback or try it anyway, cause we got a rollback. So Mojo's got the heads on, he's got push rods in, valves all adjusted. I just helped him find top dead center. I dropped the distributor in there for him. What are you all excited about, you goof? So yeah, we just got a, a few lines are hooked up. We got to tighten down the distributor, put the plug wires on, plugs in it. I took the manifolds to the town to have them planed off. So hopefully we don't have any exhaust leaks. And yeah, we should be hopefully firing this thing up this week yet. Uh, I gotta drop a fuel pump in it. I got the new one sitting in the box back there. There's the old one, it stinks. Something profuse. We should probably drop the tank, pressure wash that all out. Do a lot of pressure washing. But we gotta wait, I think two weeks before we can drive on this pad back here. So yeah. We got a mess back here. Oh yeah, because we got all this stuff off the mezzanine. Well, not really the mezzanine, the water tank over here. We got, we got water, we got rural water. We got running water in North Dakota, believe it or not. So uh, this was kind of my toy display area, my man cave, my display case. We got most of the stuff down. We still got to get a couple pedal tractors and some cool rests and the Schmidt cooler and the giant telephone. And then we can take down that pallet racking. We can take on this wooden shelf. And we can get this thousand gallon tank out of here and then we got to reset everything back up but that's why we got this corner cleaned up and while i'm back here cleaning i need to get that 63 impala running so that we can use our wildfire lifts for something else other than storing a gold 63 impala on it yeah we got too many projects too many projects 
And I blame it on all you folks for watching this stuff and allowing me to bring them home. So thank you for that, for all the projects. So many projects, projects, projects. And then we got museum stuff. And I gotta pack some orders, but yeah. Let's go eat lunch. What are you making for lunch, Duff? Tacos? Taco Tuesday? I love me some tacos, so does Duff. Yeah. All right, I suppose we better uh, empty a trailer so that we can go get some more stuff. So, I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna loosen all the binders on the old sprint car. Let's see if we can't just pick her off with the old tele handler. Seem like a good idea? Duff doesn't seem to think so. All right, I'm gonna undo the chains. Probably gotta take this stuff off the top of the hitch. And then just come in from underneath and whoosh, easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Right. All right, I don't wanna bung up this hitch any more than it already is, so I'm gonna use the old side by side, and hopefully skate it in. Beaver trucking! What a great name for hauling gravel. Yeah, so that hitch isn't really hooked up. It's just kind of setting their line on hopes and dreams. So let's see if we can't get it back in the shop without hurting anybody. All right, we're in. Just the tip, that is. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> let's see if we can't get this thing rolled off the trailer so we can start putting pieces on it. I think those pieces all go to it. We're gonna find out. Anyway, yeah. What do you think of this thing, Duff? I don't know that there's room to go for rides in it, unfortunately. All right, let's finally take a little bit closer look at this thing. I'm not gonna lie, I know probably more about volcanoes than I know about sprint cars so we're all gonna learn together and those of you that already know are gonna bash me in the comments so let me know what I screwed up that's how we learn so this trailer was very well built um, well thought out I would say since how it's got the plastic on here that it was probably used well into the 80s. Boyerstown, Pennsylvania, Morrisville toolboxes. I think these are just generic toolboxes. This is a bunch of conduit. They bent up for all the different tires. I suppose you wanted different heights and staggerings and who knows? I don't know race car terms. Neither does Duff. The jack was bent when we started, so we need to fix that. And then this channel is bent a little bit. It's got this Atwood setup up here. Oh, it's got uh, this shock that's tied to a single reservoir master cylinder, and that's kind of for your braking. But the hitch kind of has a little, a little tweak to it. She's kind of cattywampus, so we might have to look into that. I don't know if Atwood's still in business. This must have been for your breakaway, I guess. So it's got a breakaway, it's got safety chains. I think it's inch and seven eighths, unfortunately which everything I got is two or two and five sixteenths. We don't mess around. Big ball stuff, right, duh? Need some tires. I need to, uh, I think we're missing the rod that goes through here. Somebody else, unfortunately, bought all the tires that fit in there, but I think there's a few at the farm we can make enough to mock it up. Nice little holders for your jerry cans with a clamp that holds it in place, even. Tail lights on both sides. Got these cute little ramps with that hole there. And then I think the only thing holding the car on those are the ramps and this chain, which I think if I'm gonna mess around with it, we'll put another chain somewhere up there in the middle and then uh, chain the front axle. So let's look at the car. I don't know, this must have been your setup, like your preload. So there's a torsion bar going this way to that side. Same thing going this way, they're splined. You can adjust them, it looks like it just rests on the axle. And there's your, I don't know, trailing arm? Is that what that's called? And uh, it's got a couple adjustments there. This looks like a pretty well-built chassis. Like somebody knew what they were doing that did this. Probably a shop. Looks like KH, those Kelsey Hayes spindles. 
maybe straight axle aftermarket uh, disc brakes spindle mounts I think that piece is magnesium they're like a six lug and then it's just this uh, spindle mount with the Halibrand there's a left hand thread and a right hand thread looks like Brian Buzzick was the last one running this car thanks to Terry TC I think TC is Tom Cummings uh, he was the gentleman that told me more of the history on the car I'm gonna reach out to him see if we can't find a little bit more information on it Looks like this was the hood hold down. She's wanged up pretty good on this side. The other side's in all right shape. I'm guessing this is where Hillborn injectors or your air cleaner or whatever would stick through. We are missing the steering box. Big aluminum drag link. This shaft is chromed. A Valvoline decal. These are aluminum rods. It's got a CAE in and out box. I have no idea what that lever does. As far as I know, these in and out boxes are just exactly that you're either in gear or you're not and then you just drop the clutch and go like i said need to find that steering box i wish i would have been paying attention uh, unfortunately they sold a lot of the parts before i bought the car so there was a couple steering boxes there one was power steering which i think would have been after this it's got a halibrand quick change halibrand engineering torrance california there's probably more information on this I don't know a ton about these quick changes. They're a lot bigger than the ones used in the old hot rods. They're full floating, as you can see. Disc brakes. Yeah. So I'm guessing there was a probably a torque tube that went in between there. So we'll have to keep an eye open for one of those and a drive shaft. I think I'm just gonna use this car as a static display mock-up. This wheel is magnesium. That other one that I got at the farm that's magnesium is not a mate to it but we can put it on there obviously they staggered everything anyway um, front wheels are steel this wheel steel looks like there's a strap here and i think this is the fuel cell it just hooks up to this guy to hold her in there and then ah, i don't know there must be pressure and return and, and oh that's kind of neat just uh spring loaded keep the fuel from sloshing out maybe Santa Anita Engineering Company, Pasadena, California. These rotors are even drilled. Again, torsion bars back here. There's a separate torsion bar, one for the left, one for the right. And it's got these preloads for all your adjustments on there. I mean, there's been a little bit of welding done in this frame, but it don't look like it's been all schmucked up. I think that that bumper that goes on the rear and then these bumpers on the side and the roll cage, all that stuff's replaceable. So if you do get into a wreck, you can hopefully fix it. Looks like this tube down here is broke. Still got the mid plate in there. Like I said, here's the hold downs on this side. So you can just pull it up, spring loaded. Never seen anything like that. They're pretty cool. Uh, Red River excavating. Like I said, Brian Buzzick is on LinkedIn. So I was gonna try to reach out to him, see if we could find some information. And I think, yeah, there you go. You see the outline of the small block bolted up right there. So we just need to find whatever they use for a coupling. Unless that bolts. I bet that bolts right to the uh, crankshaft. And then we need a mid plate that bolts in here, which we might have one. It looks like there's a little skid plate there for your fan, your radiator. I should have bought a radiator there. There was a couple there. Steering is the big thing that we're missing but I think I can find that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So let's uh, do a little mocking up, see what we got going on here.
All right, got a pretty good start at setting this thing together. Of course, a lot of that stuff was bent, so we had to do a little banging and pulling with the uh, come along and whatnot. I'm not sure I like it. I think it looked a lot cooler with the open wheel and everything else. I do like this chrome bumper dealio going on there, but we'll get the wing on it and see how it looks. We had to shut her down last night. We got into the sandwiches. Let's get the hitch on this trailer figured out what size it is or what we got to fix up here anyway to get it to hook up to a trailer. I think it's just inch and seven eighths. Let's grab an inch and seven eighths ball and see if it fits Duff. No, you just want to go for riding the Ranger. No, we got work to do. We bought too much stuff and we still got to go back for another load. Maybe we'll uh, unbolt that jack and see if we can't cut the wheel off. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll just cut the wheel off and then we can just use the jack as a jack. Yeah. So that we can prop it up and not have to use a fancy aluminum racing jack. And we're going to have to sleeve this guy or make a new one and then make a new one for that. Let's just cut this rope. Minnesota things. Nobody knows about freaking ratchet straps over there. Everybody just uses rope to tie their cars down. And I don't know why that was there. Just to have something for the wheel to rub against maybe? We may never know. All right. Oh, yeah. Freaking wood billies in Minnesota. All right, we got our hitch all lubed up. It is in fact an inch and seven eighths. A two inch would almost go, but it won't. So it must be inch and seven eighths. It's kind of a interesting latching design. It just over centers. There's no pin or anything that holds it down. So that's kind of unfortunate. There's an adjustment here for uh, adjusting the uh, internals there. And the whole thing pivots. So this hitch is welded solid to the uh, tongue of the trailer. And then it can pivot there and there this uh, I don't know, receiver, if you will. So when you hit the brakes, this stays stationary in your vehicle, and this whole receiver slides forward. And then as that slides forward, it puts pressure on this shaft, which is the shaft for the hydraulic brakes. So we got hydraulic backing plates on uh, each of the wheels out there. And then also you got your safety chain here, and if your car comes unhooked, it pulls on that lever which pushes on this lever which applies your uh, brakes on your little fruit jar i think it's like a ford master cylinder well internationally used them and stuff like that single reservoir and then it's got this little shock back here to absorb the uh, minor details it doesn't really look like there's much adjustability it looks like there's a it's kind of like a park brake lever you can set that to where it's just about touching and then when it applies you have to uh, release it manually but yeah, this is a pretty sweet setup. It's got the old uh, four pin plug on it. So that needs to be converted to a seven pin or use an adapter, but it looks like it's in pretty bad shape. I like converting everything to seven pin. And there must have been an eyelet somewhere. I can't figure out where it was to, uh, oh, I bet it was right there, but it was that guy. Sure enough to uh, hold that up. Safety chains uh, need hooks on them. I don't really like these. Uh, whatever you call them but let's figure out this whole jack situation let's take that thing off of there and take it over to the welding table and do a little figuring plus like i said we gotta straighten out that gusset anywho uh, i looked online and i couldn't find any information well couldn't find any pictures of one like this it'd be cool to straighten out this cover it'd be really cool to have it all working again but like i said that tongue's kind of bent and there's just a lot of moving parts and lubrication and then you gotta redo the master cylinder and redo all those brakes and let's be honest this thing doesn't weigh anything depending on what we're pulling it with the beauty of this setup is whatever you pull it with it's going to have brakes you don't have to have a pickup with a trailer brake controller or a car or whatever so this is a really swell setup at the time like i said if you're pulling this with a station wagon you're going to want brakes but a half ton or three quarter ton pickup this is going to be hardly any weight behind it so i mean whoever built this trailer really thought this out whoever was probably racing this car at one point or another car all right let's fix a jack quit jacking around i 
instead of the old death wheel, we're gonna use our evolution saw here. These things are super fantastic. I cannot praise this thing enough. If you are on the fence about buying one of these, absolutely go and do it right now. I was on the fence for way too long. Here we are, finally have it. And it's great. Alright, it's gonna make quick work of this. No sparks, no heat, put your hand right on it. Blade's still spinning. It's good. And they're not any, everyone complains about how loud they are. They're not any louder than a regular abrasive saw. Evolution saws. They're great. Get yourself one. This tube is bent ever so slightly. So, but I think it'll retract and extend just fine. But this thing doesn't weigh much and we can lift it up. But I do want to put a flat plate on the end here so this doesn't just sink into the ground. And then we don't have to have a four by four all the time or whatever two by four to put underneath there. He's busy doing something, aren't you? All right, I'm gonna find something to weld to the bottom of this just for S's and G's so we can have a hitch again. I really have never been a fan of hitches with, or hitch, a jack with the, with the wheel on them because they always want to go the wrong way and they get caught on things. And I mean, they're great if you're rolling your boat around your nice clean shop floor, but this race car was sitting outside in the dirt. Frame repair by Mortsky here. The old Swedish nut wrench. Such a multi-functional tool. Ooh. Yeah. That's some good iron there, son of a biscuit. And the camera's rolling. I'm probably about to bust my teeth out. Oh. Good as new. Well, let's uh, test her out. Swivels, that's a plus. Let's see if you change it. Away. Come on, yeah. Never been jacking off on camera before. Way more gooder. I'm jacking off. <laughs> you know what? Since we're messing around here, I wonder if I got some hooks. Actually, these things still work. I would have never thought. In a million years, that these things would not be seized. Solid. Holy buckets, they're like new. What about the other side? Not a chance. I guess this is a ground wire right here, just kind of hanging out. We'll delete the ground. I think we're pretty much wrapped up up there. Like I said, I kind of want to put some hooks on there, but. And we gotta fix the hitch and we gotta fix so we're not anywhere anywhere close to done but let's see what's in the toolbox they had this open at the auction or somebody did i didn't see anything great in there i didn't think well this might give us a date uh, rustoleum i don't see anything that's date related 7790 maybe 1990 i doubt it but maybe some 50 weight high performance racing oil. So you know it was race car stuff, 8590. What is this? Electronic cleaner. No clue what they're doing that. Craftsman screwdriver. Hey, we're hanging on to that. Quick change gears. Oh, some miscellaneous hardware from Max. What's this guy? 
Oh, a gap tool. Racine, Wisconsin. A&E Manufacturing. Looks like a bunch of quarter inch hardware in there. More 8590. I suppose. Yep. I suppose when they were swapped on these quick changes, you take the rear cover off, dump the oil, and you can either swap these gears around or swap in a whole separate set. And then you got to put uh, fresh gear oil in there. So explains all the 8590 and the uh, gears. Like this is a set of must be 545s. And these are uh, 520s. I don't know what those are. Yeah, race car stuff. Blue Krylon. Oh, it's even got carpeted all the way in the front. Shag on the back. These guys knew what was up. Or shag. Oh, there's a lid on the top? No way. I don't think they had that open at the uh, auction. They definitely did not have that open. Allen wrenches. More gap tools. Three ace ratchet. Taiwan five ace socket. Proto. Allen. Craftsman hex, hex set. Bumblebees. And anodized fittings. Hydraulic fittings. And fitting. Max. Oh, yes, they're the good ones. DeWitt, Nebraska. The best locking players made. Saw. Screws, paint marker, miscellaneous hardware for Max, some strap from Max, fresh set of rusty Craftsman Allen sockets, drill bits, quarter to three ace adapter, some three in one oil. Oh, look at this cute little hammer slash pry bar thing who are you made by the bridgeport something the bridgeport home manufacturing company oh that's pretty cool it's got a flare end on the one end and then a open on the other it's made by proto half inch that's pretty neat that's pretty neat whole bunch of uh dies another craftsman Allen wrench, 916 Craftsman, the old one. Dang. Three quarter inch socket for spark plugs. Man, there's some goodish stuff up here. I don't think anybody realized that lid was like that. I know I didn't. And I bought this stupid thing. What's this? Is there a lock on this thing? There must be a way to lock it. Something slides in from the side? I don't know. Oh, there's locks there. Who knows? I don't get it. And then it locks. Oh. So you lock it here. If it was closed. If it was closed, you'll pull this lever, lock it there. And then you lock these outside ones. Nobody can get into your stuff. Looks like off a leg lift station, but probably has something to do with race cars. Old paper towels, Napa brake cleaner. Oh, no way. Race car stuff. Air density percentage. Hygrometer. I don't know what this is. This thing tells us that uh, we're leaning towards rain. There's stormy, there's very dry, there's fair. Yeah, we're leaning towards rain today. Oh, you can check the... I don't know. We're going to set it at... That's where it was when we started. And they're lining up. Let's see if it changes. Interesting. Race car stuff. And you know I'll forget to check it. <laughs> yeah. Claw hammers. What the French. Some more mystery oil. Yeah, SAE 50 race car stuff we're just gonna put all that back in there Halibrand knockoff 
sure enough another one of these things they must have been ideal in racing oh these are uh, your torsion bar adjusters a bunch of spare Heinz ends 9 volt battery should we put our tongue on it and test it I'm guessing from the uh, rust it's not going to work <coughs> a ginormous socket with no size or name on it another spindle nut axle nut something more torsion bar keys what is this doohickey I'm guessing it's a tool for something race car stuff it's a spacer for a wheel C clamp another saw bug spray another craftsman flat screwdriver more bug spray does it still work though off of course it does this stuff's great sc johnson man oh that's even a craftsman c clamp all kinds of good stuff in here i am really probably the best purchase of the day was this trailer we got to uh figure out either fix that bolt or get a different bolt so that we can tie this thing on here better so we don't have to use the ratchet straps anymore and then this needs to be fixed as well our jerry can hold down somebody bent it we'll get right on that got the uh trailer unloaded so we got a couple model b blocks here i don't know a ton about model b's i think they got a counterbalance crankshaft on them but that doesn't look counterbalanced to me but i don't know nothing about nothing model b's got a bolt-on rear bell housing as opposed to a model a dust checking her out getting in there real nice and deep like that's it boy get in there nice and deep like and then model b's the 32s had the fuel tank it wasn't gravity feeds so they got a fuel pump boss on it so that's the uh, dead giveaway that you got a model b is the uh, fuel pump plate or hole right there and right there and then i th think they got regular insert bearings but these kind of look like they're poured babbitt i don't know i'm guessing they're poured babbitt i don't know a ton about model b's i'll do a little research and then we'll have to look up the numbers on this hemi head and then the numbers on that uh oldsmobile pontiac center section which is pretty rough but it was laying there and it's easy to store but while we were unloading the trailer i noticed there was some oil soot stuff on the uh, trailer and on the pickup like all these spots right here so pickups due for an oil change we're gonna put her up in the air and see where that oil is coming from if it's got blow by or if the tranny's leaking or if it's just something we drove over who knows but i always keep an eye on stuff that's the beauty of pulling a trailer is you notice some of this stuff even though it's all over the pickup definitely looks like it's coming down the driver's side but all over the back hopefully it ain't anything too big and then we got to get the wing out of here we're gonna take the saw with the old wild thing in case we got to cut down some big trees when we go back and we're gonna hook onto the big trailer that was the reason i had to get the trailer empty so hook up the big trailer right duff and do big dog things i don't know what we got going on with the old tow pig but she's a little low on oil it's due for an oil change though so Maybe that's that but unfortunately looks like all this oil is coming out of the uh, road draft tube i mean it's not a ton of oil but it's noticeable so maybe we're uh getting some blow by i think it's got 214,000 on it so not a ton for a cummins but i guess we're going to change the oil and see hopefully we don't need to uh rebuild the engine in the old tow pig oh we got it up in the air we're gonna change oil put a filter on it now yeah, we'll grease the uh front drive shaft and the u-joints on the front end and the rear drive shaft and we'll check the transfer case and the old nv5600 six speed give her a walk around make sure everything's good to go i keep eating up these freaking hanger bearings this one's shot again so yeah i don't know I must have to buy a more expensive one but it's got a little vibration in the drive line sure enough that's what it is and i bet that thing isn't two years old so it's maybe got 
10,000 miles on it. 20 tops. Freaking everything's falling apart around this place. Our exhaust that we just put on is looking good. We'll check our rear diff and our front diff, all that stuff too. Just give it a good walk around. Check all the brake pads, all that. But yeah, there's oil all the way back here. So she's definitely got some blow by. Great. Anybody want to be our 24 valve 59 Cummins replacement engine sponsor? It's always something around here. Alrighty, old White Ryan's all serviced up. Tech tip of the day, where's that adapter? There's this little adapter you put on your uh, grease gun. You can grease the uh, front drive line. There's, I don't know what they call it. It's, I don't know if it's a cardan joint, cardan joint. But uh, it's like two knuckles and then there's a ball that pivots in there. You gotta have this special adapter in there. I don't know if it's all just Dodges or other four wheel drives, but get yourself one of these adapters. They work pretty good for greasing them. I think I found out why we had some blow by. Take the valve cover, take the uh, oil fill out, and it doesn't have any blow by up top of the engine. But that was my air filter. <laughs> no, that's not a Fram filter, it's a Wix. It was uh, two years old and had, mm, was there 214? So it had 19,000 miles on it, but that was just terrible. Hopefully we'll get some better fuel economy. Don't tell anyone that I forgot to uh, check that in the last couple of oil changes. Whoopsies. So, oh, and I had a tail light, not a tail light, a license plate light out. So we got that fixed. So now we're ready to hook her up to the gooseneck. Yep, still working. And uh, do some more towing, hopefully, with better fuel economy and no more oil consumption. Let's turn the lights off before we got a dead battery. Got the trailer hooked up, pulled outside. I did put some new bolts for these ramps to hold the chains up. And then I set the wing on there. I don't think this was a wing car originally. You know, there's brackets for these Nerf bars and brackets for the cage, but see how they added this for the wing? I think somebody tried to go wing racing with it and then just added this on. And I kind of liked it without the cage. I, I just liked it all open wheel and no everything else. So I don't think that's for this car and I don't think that's for this car. Maybe that was on the front, I don't know how the bracketry works up here. Maybe they stuck onto this or something. But anyway, I think what I'm gonna do is sell all that stuff to hopefully somebody that's an enthusiast. And then we'll take the grinder and cut this off and clean her up a bit. I think that's where we're gonna call it. There were some seats at that auction. Dang it, I should have looked into getting one of them. But yeah, if we found a, a seat and a steering box and then just mock up a small block in here. This thing will be pretty good. Maybe a drive shaft. Let's see if we can find one of those out of the farm when we go back. But That'll look kind of cool, the wing. Oh, yeah, and we put the nose cone on it. There's probably more of a nose cone that used to be there. I don't know. We're going without the wing. No wing. Yeah, good call. What do you think there, Duff? Looks a lot better. I almost like it without that uh, cage on the top better, but she's all together and we kind of whammy these uh, side skirt rub rails in there. So those running boards ain't coming off. Maybe we'll uh, put some tubes in the tire or something like that. Speaking of that, we're gonna put a tube in this white rim because I don't like these red ones that I put on there and they're 14s and these are uh, 15s. So we're gonna stick a tube in there so we can put both the white wheels on this thing. And then I think we're gonna load her up and kick her outside for display. What do you say? Go make some hay? Just stay out of my way, or you'll pay. Listen to what I say. How about I just go eat some hay? I can make things out of clay and lay by the bay. I just may. What do you say? Sounds okay. Yeah, here's a good pop verse. We're gonna go pop. Motor by Mojo, we got her all pushed up there and tied down. There ain't no extra room. You gotta get her on there just straight. But, we even got her tied down. 
If only there was an engine in it, we could go racing maybe, huh? You gonna drive it? Not today. Not today? All right, I'm gonna run to town and grab some 454 manifolds. They're all planed up for keeping Mojo going on the old rollback, so. I think I'm gonna take Cowboy Cadillac and enjoy some AC, because she's a little sweaty today. All right, hopefully our third and final trip. Got the 40 foot Lamar hooked up to White Ryan with a new air filter and the old S650 Bobcat. Hopefully we can get the two chassises, a couple of engines, the Model A two-door sedan body and maybe a sprint car uh, trailer. Here we go. Brought all kinds of straps with and the chainsaw just in case. All right, we're back here at the farm. We're gonna unload the skid steer and uh, hopefully not pop any tires and drag some junk out. Stack of 56 doors. Here we go. Now the fun part. Filling the trailer and making sure it don't fall off. Gonna do a little reorganizing on the trailer. We got the suicide axle unbolted from that hot rod frame.
Well, yeah, we got a Model A sedan body sitting on a Model A hot rod chassis. We're that much closer. Now I think we gotta figure out where we're gonna put all the rest of the stuff. And three sweet engines, snug as three bugs in a rug. 60 horse, 100 horse, and a Hemi. Got here at 10, it's 12.27, two and a half hours. Of... Well, I got, it, was, it, was, it wasn't so bad in the skid steer, but loading her up, not good. We got her, we got a fuel jug, and we got some rad meters, and we got some slicks, and we got some 35 wires. We're gonna use some uh, TKO hand cleaning wipes from Sweet Patina. Get yours at sweetpatina.com. Use the uh, promo code MR80. Again, MR80 for uh, your discount. We got a Hemi, we got a flathead, we got a baby flathead, we got some 56 bumpers, a couple of three speed trannies, a sprint car center section, the front axle from that hot rod frame. We got a hot rod frame. Oh man, what else is back here? Oh, another like 41 Ford axle. Pile of 56 doors, I think there's seven of them. A couple of sprint car tail housings. Model A body, another Model A hot rod chassis. Sprint car wings, sprint car tires, T-deck lid. And our trusty Bobcat S650 with our homemade six foot fork extensions. Unfortunately, we did not get the sprint car trailer because uh, I didn't need it. We had room, we got eight feet of room here. So we might have to find something on the way home to buy. How'd you get so dirty? I don't know. All right, we're gonna get cleaned up. We're gonna go find some lunch. Maybe an adult beverage. Maybe not, we'll see. Let's get home and get her all unloaded. Take a shower. All right, we made her home. It is hot out, got the sombrero on. We're gonna get this thing unloaded. The AC is real nice and old white Ryan. Make sure to stay hydrated. The old sombrero is gonna keep the sun off our neck, even though the sun is hiding at the moment, but let's get this mess unloaded, Duff. You just run around like a psycho while we do all the work. Sounds good. Here goes nothing. All right there, boys and girls, we got the pickup unloaded, and I think that's pretty much gonna conclude this video. I'll give you a quick walk around of what we got, what we're gonna keep, what we're gonna sell, what do you wanna see us do next, where we're gonna will it run, so on and so forth. Uh, we spent a lot of money, but we got a lot of really good stuff, and hopefully we can pedal a little bit of it, get a little bit of our uh, investment back, and hopefully we can make some really amazing content for you folks, so. So over here, here's what we got. Over here in the scrap pile, we got a couple of radiators, uh, sprint car radiators, early Ford radiators anyway. They're scrap, we'll get a couple bucks for those. There's some, uh, I don't know, cooling fan. There's some aluminum there. There's a big old ugly cast, or uh, aluminum fuel pump, a bread loaf torque converter. We got a couple of these three speeds. This is a 57 Chevy three speed, it decodes as, with a add-on floor shifter. This, I believe, is a three speed from like a 69 or a 70 Chevelle. It looks like they use it in pickups as well, but that thing is just an absolute freaking beast. I mean, look at how big that is compared to that. I think it's a Saginaw. I think they're both Sag, I don't know. That flathead Ford header, I, I couldn't throw it away. It was on that uh, tube chassis. It's just too cool. It's got that dump underneath the car and then the cap that you could take off. Uh, 3940 Ford brake clutch pedal assembly came off the other chassis. Uh, wide five hubcap. A visor, it's not for a Model A, but to make it fit whatever. We'll probably try to pedal that, hopefully. We can find a home for these three speeds or we'll just throw them in a pile. We got the torque tube that was off that one hot rod chassis. I don't know if it's gotta be shortened or if it'll fit, but it's with the car. Here's something that we found in the scrap pile there. These are 56 Chevy bumpers. They go with all those doors we got, but this is a one piece bumper. This is a California bumper. Most of the cars had a seam right here on each side and then the bumperettes cover it. This is a front and rear match set. They're not in amazing shape, but turns out they're better than the ones on the 56 that I got. So that was a really good deal right there. So obviously we'll put those bumpers on that 56. Uh, we'll throw those three speeds in a pile, maybe throw them in the swap meet pile. We got this T turtle deck. We'll try to pedal that because I don't have any T coops or maybe we'll find a T coop someday that doesn't have it. So this will be available. If you see anything that you can't live without and you're willing to come get it because we're not gonna ship anything. It's just not worth our time and shipping prices are insane. So you gotta come get this stuff. We're in Southeast North Dakota here. 
Now we're not gonna meet you. We're not gonna deliver it. Don't even ask. But hit us up, mortgagerepair at gmail.com. This here is kind of the swap meet pile. We got a bunch of sprint car stuff. We got that mid plates, a couple of mid plates. Uh, we're gonna sell all the sheet metal stuff. We got some quick change gears, odds and ends, that axle, 993 heads, some early Ford backing plates, that stuff maybe we would ship. They usually go for a hundred and a half a pair, some Model T grill shells, some uh, axles from some sprint cars. So hopefully we can find somebody to just buy all this sprint car stuff. That'd be great. But unfortunately, I think we're going to have to piecemeal it out. But we didn't pay much for the sprint car stuff. The Chevrolet wire wheel, we'll try to sell that to somebody to use as yard art. It's really not that great a shape. Um, this is a 17, so that's a 33, 34 Ford wire wheel. Uh, these are a couple of 40 Ford steelies we'll uh take the tires off those hopefully we can salvage them and is that a 17 as well that is a 17 so but they're pretty rotten and the ants absolutely love them so we'll probably just take the tires off these and maybe use them for rollers or you know maybe somebody's maybe someday we'll do like staggers like 17s and 16s or 18s and 16s or something but it's too good to just leave laying in the uh pile out there so we brought them home we'll put them with all of our other early ford wire wheels we got this axle out of the tube chassis again we'll probably pop the rubber off usually the, getting the rubber off helps preserve the wheel and then we can see how pitted up they are if they're worth saving uh we got this model a axle and wishbone it's already been split keep that around for a future hot rod project doesn't have the uh juice backing plates on this one we got this front end, I believe it's off of a 42 to 48 because it's square back and it's got this dip. We'll hang on to that. Who knows? Maybe we'll need uh, some wishbones with that dip in there or we'll need a single square back spindle because we're missing the other one. So that stuff probably would all sell. But again, it's pretty heavy, not easy to ship. So you're going to have to come get it if you want it. We got it's two hours to that place. So each way, four hours, eight hours. So I got 12 hours of driving I took a buddy with on two trips. So you know, we got 20 hours of travel time alone already invested in this. So stuff doesn't just show up in my yard. You gotta put a little effort into it. I think we're gonna list this body for sale. I might have a better door or maybe we found a door at that place. I can't remember where I set that door, but this door needs a skin obviously. But we're gonna try to sell that because I don't need any sedans around. We'll try to get a few bucks out of these uh, 56 doors. Not much because they're four door doors. And then again, we got some tail section for sprint cars. We'll sell those. I think we'll hang on to this chassis. Maybe we'll see what kind of shape the old uh, 59 AB flat it is in. Maybe it'll run again, but it's got a 39 transmission. It's got juice brakes on it. And yeah, a lot of good pieces on that frame. So. I think we'll hang on to that for now. Maybe the little or sells a little hot rod someday. In keeping with the theme, the uh, sprint car wings, they're gonna go to hopefully somebody wants to hang these on the wall. They're really rough shape. That bumper's kind of cool, but hopefully somebody will give us a few bucks and they can have them because I have zero desire to have those around. We're not gonna put them back on the car. That car doesn't need one. It's never gonna have one again, as long as I own it anyway. So those can go as well. I can't believe how light those things are. Super light, huh Duff? Oh yeah, and we got the water tank moved out of the shop. So we got uh, running water in the shop, rural water. We don't have to deal with filling water tanks. So we're gonna try to, well, that's already sold. We gotta sell the uh, rest of the related components and reorganize the shop. So we have way more room for activities. So much, your aerobics in here. So many activities. Do step class. It's making my head spin how many activities we can do. We're gonna hang on to the Model B stuff for now because we got that Riley, which is a B, and the Roadster, which is a B. So we'll just hang on to that stuff. There really ain't a lot there, just some blocks if we gotta do any machine work or we're gonna build one. This is, I ran the numbers on this head. It's like a 241, 270 Dodge head. It's rough shape, but don't take up a lot of room. We'll hang on to it. Same with this center section, 9.3 holes. Labeled it, we'll hang on to it. Somebody needs. Some 9.3 cores, we could hook them up. That posi is worth a few bucks. This one, probably not worth a whole heck of a lot, but once they're gone, they're gone. Obviously, we're gonna hang on to the Roadster. So we're gonna uh, hopefully do a will it run on this thing at some point. 
I'm gonna mount up some tires so we can get the uh, wires all the way around because those steelies just look not as good. So we're gonna get some wire wheels on this thing. So stay tuned, come back. We're gonna hopefully get this thing on the road one way or another. If we gotta get that Riley running and put it in there, so be it. Or if we gotta convert it to a flathead V8. The sprint car, we threw all the tires on the trailer. I mean, they're all just junk anyways, but look at how good it looks behind the old King over here. Freaking awesome. This thing is just gonna be yard art. Maybe we'll pull it to a car show. We're uh, gonna find out the history on this car. Hopefully get some pictures of it back in the day. And yeah, we're just gonna, you know, maybe mock it up a little bit more, clean up the trailer, get the lights working, pack the bearings, throw some tires on it. Uh, maybe find some tires that hold a little bit better air and then show it off. But check out these tires. This is like an old pie crust that's siped. Here's some more uh, pie crust. I think, yeah, I think this is a matching set. These two. So those will look super cool as rollers on something. And then this thing is just an absolute beast with the uh, dual white lines and then you got massive grooves in the uh, pie crust. Really cool. I found this uh, five gallon non-potable water jug. They're always handy to have around. But yeah, this thing's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know, maybe we'll hang on to it. Maybe we'll sell it. I think we'll just keep it around. We're not into it too deep and it's really cool conversation piece. Maybe we'll hang it on the wall someday. Hang it from the ceiling. That's what Chin thinks I need to do. Which ain't a bad idea, but I kind of dig the trailer. So I don't know how we would do that. Can't hang the whole package up. We would definitely need a bigger shop. And then we got the Halibrand quick change inside. We got the Halibrand magnesium wheel. We got that 32 grill shell. We'll hang that on the wall. That is not for sale. Paid up for that. And I'm gonna hang on to it and hopefully use it on a project someday. Otherwise, we're just gonna enjoy it on the ceiling because they're not making any more 32 grill shells. I mean, you can get reproductions, but they're not as nice as the originals. They're only original once. And, uh, yeah, we got an extra in and out box. Since that car's got an in and out box in it, we'll probably throw that with the sprint car parts to sell. And yeah, I think that's that's about it. And when we still got the Riley and the Hillborn. Um, both of these are not gonna be our standard will it run. We're gonna have to open these things up and make sure everything's in good shape. I, I think they're both locked up, unfortunately. So it's gonna take a little work, but that's a super rare setup. And this is just really cool. So kind of a once in a lifetime deal. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, that was probably one of the best auctions that I'll ever be at in my life. There's just a ton of cool stuff. Prices were kind of all over the place. You know, we gambled on buying the stuff at the farm and it turned out pretty well. Um, paid up for, you know, the magnesium wheel and the 32 grill and the Roadster and the Riley and the Hillborn, but you gotta pay to play. This stuff is not, cheap i mean yeah granted there's some deals out there but they don't uh, just fall in your lap and it took we had to put a lot of effort into getting all that stuff out of the trees and we're not getting rich doing it but um thank you guys very much for watching it's people like you watching this stuff that makes it so that we can afford to do cool stuff like that check out the merch we got the uh, low life shirts and the next level on uh, mortski.com and yeah, uh, other ways you can support, uh, leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. You can uh, follow us on Instagram. You can support us on Patreon. You can get this sweet, sweet merch. We got the uh, low life shirts in the next level variety at Mortski.com. We got magnetic koozies. We got banners. We got magnetic screwdrivers. We got a lot of really great products. Thank you for every, to everybody who has purchased products from us. It's awesome. It's a lot of work. I spent probably two hours today packing orders because our label maker was down for the last couple days so I apologize to everybody who's you know I try to ship them out the next day but some of these orders had to wait three days and I, it's just absolutely killing me but we've been busy and like I said uh, we ran out of labels my bad but thank you to everybody who's uh, purchased from Mortski.com and remember it doesn't matter how you get it done so long as you're having fun and I tell you what auction sales can uh, be a lot of work but they're a lot of fun should we mount up some wheels for that Roadster Duff? So they all match? Yeah.
You know, the guy to ask would be in the, uh, in the five there. Hey, Mike. Or hey, Tom, Tom. Yeah. He's wondering. Oh, not this guy this again. Oh, this is a Roger Beck. Chassis. I might chase you down at some point. Get, yeah. you, on, get you on camera. Because sure. I mean, you got a face for radio. Oh, you know where Delamar is? Delamar, yeah. Delamar? Dale Griggs. I don't know if he's still. Yeah. Well, I don't know if of Dale he used to race that one. No way. Yeah, yeah Delamar's only 15 miles from Dale me. Griggs actually raced it. He's the one that sold it to Brian Music. So. Cool. I remember going down to Griggs' place to pick it up. That's awesome. It's got local history. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll chase you, you down. And, music. Huh? You know the music? Tom Cummings? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's been around for about 100 years. So yeah, he knows, no Brian you know. and stuff. You know. so. know and the deal with that race. Like I said, I know nothing about these things. I just... What do you get for 700 yeah. bucks anymore, you know? No, I mess with that. We're going to do that. 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 Lot number five, we got the trailer. We got $500 for the five, you get a bit five, you get a bit five, you get a bit five, sold it back there for 15. We got this Model B, it's lot number 12, right? Lot number 12. 6500, how about 62 and a half to help you? 62 and a half, 62 and a half, time time's up, gotta go, 6250, 6250. Sold the car right there. $2,200. I got the manual full injection next, lot number 16. Lot number 16. There you go. Who get what? Who get $500 in that one? We're going to be 500. Who get it at 7? I get 650 dead. No, 7. Who get it at 7? Remember, there's no such thing as friends at auction sale. 700 bucks. I get 650 dead. No, 7. Who get it at 7? Big 7. Get it at 7. Big 7. Big 7. 700. 700. Here it goes. $700. Sold the Chevy 600. Who get what? Who get what? Who get what? I got 150 dead now, too. Now get it at 2. 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 200 bucks, sold it. What do you got, Gary? Engine. We got an engine, then we're going to back up by the guns. We'll sell us stuff in the farm there. We got an engine there. Who got what? Who got what? A couple hundred dollars in that engine. I didn't want to use it. A Plymouth engine or Chevy engine, whatever it is. Dodge. Dodge engine. Who got 50 bucks? <laughs> 30 to 5. You get a bit 30, you get a bit 5. You get 30, you get a bit 5. You get 30, you get a bit 5. Sold it. 30 bucks right here. We got two other touring cars and two roadsters and a roadster pickup and a couple coupes. Come on, winch faster. Okay. <laughs> So this must have been somebody's jalopy welded the wheel on. Look at that steering. Oh, sketchiness to a whole new level. Yeah. So this steering box, well, I assume I, is out of that a, a, Chevrolet. A T didn't have a steering box. The T just had reduction at the steering wheel. So oh. there's, the, there's the swinging pitman arm down Yeah. There. Oh, and that, that dent in that door was from getting it out. Uh -huh. Dang it. That wheel's welded on too. There's a little rot in that tail pan. Oh, that's way better. I'll send you pictures of the one that's replacing it. It's way better. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a pretty nice car. Hmm? That's a pretty nice car for the money. Yeah. <laughs> you were bidding against a guy from Albert Lee. Families that drag axles together stay together. Mush! Don't quit in the middle of the hill. Oh, not the new sidewalk. It'll buff out. You gonna go underneath the back? You gonna slide it underneath the back? Is that what you want to do? I don't or know. Does the hitch pivot? Not a chance. It maybe it used to. <laughs> it did at one point, not anymore. We have a couple like this at home already. <laughs> not sure why he needed one. Uh, I think that's 33 or 34. That's not a 32 heavy axle, is it? Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a 32 to 34. It wouldn't have been a 30, Mixner would have been bit, unless, did it go high? I think I paid. I think that is a 32 heavy, but good score. Cause that's just a stock. Well, that's 37 to 41 or 35 to spring ahead. Cool, thank you very much. No problemo. I don't think there's any way that's coming out of there. If it does, I would just uh, keep going. 